and I'm waiting in the rain. Tell me why I must I always explain. I've always gone out of my way not to be a rock star. Anybody who knows me knows that, just like the sun shines. I never even wanted to become famous. I work for a living. You know what I do? I sing, I write songs, I make records, I do gigs. I work for a living. what's left to do. Didn't, didn't you tell me before that you would like to get into the big band stuff or to get back to more blues, rhythm and blues, black music and all of that? Well, I, I just sort of come full circle and, and you know, couldn't see it because it was right in front of my nose. Um, because when I, I, what I started my whole, uh, I just wanted to sing music I liked, music I liked, which was blues. That was like the whole point of, you know, getting into it in the first place. You, you, your quote is saying you're a black man in a white man's body. Yeah. Oh, it feels like that a lot of the times. Basically, I'm, I'm performing. You gotta help me. I can't do it all by myself. Lord, you got to help me, baby. Can't do it all by myself. If you don't help me, help me find someone else. When you walk, walk with me. Do you see yourself as essentially a blues singer? I do see my, that's where I came from and anything after that came from that. So I started off as a blues singer, so my, my whole thing developed there, and soul music as well. My, my songs started out of, you know, basically soul music, how they wrote songs in those days, sort of Sam Cooke, um, the way he wrote songs. So my songwriting came out of that soul music and blues. My voice came out of blues to begin with. Your main influences are? Well, John Lee Hooker was a main influence. If you say main, I say Lead Belly, um, Sonny Terry, Brandy McGee, Muddy Waters, saxophone players, Jimmy Jeffrey, Jerry Mulligan, Chet Baker, Ray Charles, James Brown, the name of you. Going away so far. When do you think rock stopped rolling? When it, well, when it, when it lost the role. When it lost the role. When it lost that, you know, um, that beat. When it lost that beat. It, it wasn't rock and roll after that. And uh, this can be, I mean, there's people that go into this in, on a technical level. I don't have the info with me, but uh, when it stopped rolling, when it became rock. But rock became then a, a broad, broad term. You know, which which means rock means anything, right? anything from great to mediocre. You know, and it all comes under the heading of rock or pop or whatever. But it's, I mean, anything can sell. You know, I mean, it's always been like that. There's always been an, ele an element of, you know, even bad music selling. It's always been that element. But I think it's just more today. 
uh, because it, you know, they can, people can get away with more. There's broader range of getting away with more, you know. So does rock and pop bury rock and roll? Yeah. Uh, is it as dead as a dodo, as a passe, or could it be revived? No, it's, I mean, rock and roll is still active. It's just it's just not as big as it was, but it's, it's underground. It's been pushed underground. Can you see a revival? No. Why not? No. Um, because it, I think at this point it's 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 non-commercial, and maybe that's what it should have been in the first place. Um, it's non-commercial because I think it's a very... Uh, um, it's, a, it's a, what do you call it? it it's very esoteric now. I mean, the real old rock and roll stuff and the real old rock, they're not getting, they can't get much work. They don't get much work, those guys. I mean, there's, there's people around that started in the beginning with uh, Elvis Presley and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and these. There's people that started the same time as them, or even before them, that are still doing gigs now, but you never hear about them. So then you do think it's passe and dead as a dodo? Um, I don't know, because anything could happen. Look at blues. You know, I mean, when I started singing blues, I mean, people didn't, you know, 90% of the people he came out never heard of it. Didn't hear. With them and so the rhythm monks. and blues was something that was unheard of. So, I mean, look what happened now to blues. So you never can tell. Oh, it's stormy, my But two is just the same. All the storm in my head The tools is just a bad Winds is worse Thurs is also sad Getting back to, say, inspiration or, or when you're writing a song, how do you know when a song is finished? Just instinctively now. Uh, but there's a tendency now to just f finish it quickly. I mean, when, when I first started, I used to like ponder them a bit more, um, and you know, edit a lot more, and then rewrite them and all that. Sometimes I rewrite now, but mainly I just take them as they as they come out, as the lines are coming, and just stay with that. Are you ever afraid that the music or the words will leave? No, no. Um, well, you could put it another way. They could run, you could run out of things that you want to say, you know, or ways of saying them. You could run out, you know, but as long as you find a way to say something, um, you know, then you can write something if you find a way to say whatever it is. Uh, okay, have you ever had periods where you've dried up totally and then...? Well, I had a period where I thought I dried up, but I hadn't actually dried up. I, I sort of... Um, I, I think I just um, lost interest. I lost interest during that period. Maybe uh, it was well, for, you know because I just got fed up with the whole uh, scene, the whole you know uh, situation. So, so you doing gigs, get... making records, and I got fed up with it. So it was uh, it coincided with that, and I think I just just got uh, I, I I didn't I didn't feel like doing it. You know. Do you go into periods of exile sometimes? Oh yeah, all the time. How long has all been the, the longest period? Well, of that exile? was the longest period. That was a couple of years. And then do you come back like recharged? Um, well, I came back coming from a different angle. I, I came back, um, you know, writing from uh, more of an uh, um, in, in personal theme, uh, in, in personal spiritual theme when I, when I came back writing again. But for me, it was just sometimes it was hard to get them to come out. And sometimes, they, you know, they didn't come out. So now what, what happens is if I, if I write anything at all, I, I just keep writing. Uh, so if I find if, if I stop, then it gets slowed up again. So I just keep going. Do you get writers' It's like writer's anything, block? lifting wits or whatever. Do you ever get um, Well, as I say, I, I would get blocked if I didn't do it consistently, then I would get blocked. Do you have many unreleased songs? Um, I don't really know how much. There's quite a bit, but usually the ones that are get, you know, go out are the ones that, that you want to put out usually. But there's a few unreleased things, not that many. What comes first it's to, to be you, the spots. words or the music? Well, it's A, B, and C. You know, A is that you get a melody line first or chords first. Uh, that's A. B is you get the words first. And C is you get both at the same time. And does it just happen that way? or? No, it's the variables of those three plus, you know, other times you just get, you get one line or two lines and that's all you get. And it might be that. Some songs I've written, um, you know, I got a couple of lines and then I wrote the rest of it five years later. There's, there's no set rule. You don't have there's any no set rule at all? 
Well, there is no rule. There, there is no rule. You, you, you make your own rules up, but uh, I tend to write on whether I'm inspired or not, so the inspiration makes the rule for me. No guru, no method, no teacher. Do you think cynicism is the death of imagination? Um, I think it can be for certain people, but it can also be the beginning of it, you know? I mean, sometimes cynicism can be the beginning of imagination. For a lot of times, it has been for me. When I've, when I've reached, like, a dead end. And then cynicism is, like, um, taking me into, uh, uh, you know, having another jumping off place from seeing an angle on something I didn't see before. Whereas if I had us dead with it, it would have, you know, burnt out inevitably. Have you ever felt the urge to grab back a song and fix it? Um, yeah, I have sometimes, yeah. yeah. Or I've put things out uh, which, you know, you know get, get thrown back at me later, you know. For instance, I put out stuff that was sort of, um, when I was uh, researching, um, I mean, I used to research, you know, some spiritual stuff. And, and write songs from that viewpoint, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I believed in it. I can mean, I was, I was researching it myself. Um, can you give me an example? Well, certain things like theosophy, for instance, um, and, uh, you know, like various religions, say, like Buddhism or whatever, or, or Christianity, you know? Um, when I was, like, just looking at them and, and, and researching them, and then I, I wrote songs along those, but it didn't mean that I believed this. It was just, that was part of what I was into then, and then, <clears throat> Years later, I've had that thrown back at me. He's like, well, that's what I'm supposed to be, and I pick up something and read. He's supposed to, you know, I'm supposed like to Like Scientology. Yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to be a Christian, or I'm supposed to be a Scientology, or this or that. I mean, I was just, and that was just research. Every day, it's getting better and better. How much do you hate being asked to explain things? <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit, actually, quite a bit. Because I, I always like to move on. I never like to, you know, dwell on, like, the whole creative process is about moving. And, uh, I don't know, I've, you know, I mean, I've got loads and loads and loads of press clippings, so, but I don't even look at them. In fact, some of them I look at and go, like, I'm, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. It's like they're you know? looking at someone else, isn't it? Well, it's, it's like, um, um, there's a difference between, like, you know, what you do and, and how it's perceived at certain times. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, the thing I do live is, is really where I'm at. And, and the latest record or records is where I'm at at a given time. And, uh, you know, the other stuff is great. And, uh, you know, that was then, that was what was happening, you know? But it's, it's always the movement that interests me. Above any other form of artistic expression, music has the ability to bring a person back to a time and a place. Yeah, it's and called I, nostalgia. Mm -hmm. But yeah. do you believe this, and can you understand why, for example, as Yates said, tread softly for you tread on my dreams? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I can understand nostalgia, certainly. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, I think the way I the way I would look at it, I mean, I think I read something that Roy Arbison said about uh, I don't know, he was asked about his like old recordings and um, you know that they were like written, uh, you know, whether the the, the the guy that was asking the question implied that it was like adolescent, but Roy Arbison had a really interesting answer. He said that. He thought it was um, they were written from the angle of of, of uh, somewhat being somewhat innocent, um, and that was a quality that he liked about them. Um, so if you could separate the nostalgia, separate that from the nostalgia or pure whatever it is, uh, innocent I think meaning pure, um, then you get the essence of it. But can you respect that? But some people just like them for pure nostalgia, but I, I don't think, I mean, I don't, I don't go with that one. Yeah, but you, you know? must remember that the people who buy your songs, I mean, there are people who, a song of yours can bring back a certain very happy period in their oh, life. Yeah, of and, course, yeah. And, and this is probably why they want... Oh, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Do you record to play or play to record, or do you make any distinction between the two? Um, well, I, th I think it goes in, in phases. Um, um, so sometimes I just um, get into sort of playing live. Uh, it was like a period of like 18 months, uh, so about, about 91, 92, where I just um, played live mainly. Didn't record at all, so it was like a phase. Um, might be other phases I, I just, just record and, and don't play live, or a mixture of both. Is it when you're actually in front of a live audience and you can feel the energy, is that what you feel? The culmination of, say, being in studio happens no no it's just it's a completely different thing um studio comes just from writing the songs basically or doing songs that i like you know want to sing or either my songs or other people's songs i want to sing it comes from that basically i feel like you know um uh i have something to say or um something inspires me it comes comes from that it's a separate thing really do you think that songs always keep on growing in a live environment? Well, that always happens. That's the nature of performing. It's inevitable. They have to. All Either songs? You go forward or go, go backwards. You have, they have to. It's a marvel it's net for a moon dance With the stars up above your eyes You know the leaves on the trees are falling To the sound of the breezes that blow And I'm trying to please to the calling of you High strings that play soft and low And all the Songs are just ideas that you're working with at the time, and then you get them thrown back at you. But how I sort of um, gauge it now is um, is that um, some of the songs I've written and recorded I don't I don't I don't do anymore, say live. So I tend to tend to go with what I'm doing live is is where I'm at. That's how I gauge it. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, unfortunately, the average <clears throat> follower of yours sometimes wants the, the songs like Gloria, Brown Eyed Girl, they seem to want that in the audience and that, that seems to annoy you, doesn't it? No, it doesn't annoy me, it's just that um, it's so long ago and I'm not there. It doesn't annoy me, it's just uh, I've moved on a lot since then, you know. So sometimes when you sing Gloria, maybe if you don't want to do it, it brings back to them a certain memory. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same. If I go and see Ray Charles, I mean, I want to, I want to hear what did I say, but he's probably sick of it.
you know, luckily enough, I mean, I've had a turnover where a lot of my audience is, is, is younger now. So I'm getting a turnover where, they're, I mean, they haven't, they never heard of all this old stuff, you know? I mean, they, they come in at a different time period and uh, with a different set of myths, you know? Uh, than people, um, say, coming in the 60s or 70s, whatever, you know? So, I mean, they, these younger um, uh, fans, I mean, they, they never heard about that stuff, so, you know, it means nothing to them. They're coming fresh. But you wouldn't write the same now, would you? Uh, no, because I think that changes with, with, with age, you know? That's, uh, I think that's an age factor. And, I mean, other people have talked about this, too. I mean, Dylan talks about this as well. It's like, um, there's a time when, you know, uh, you change consciousness at certain stages in your life. And, I mean, you can't write the same at 40 as you did when you are 21, because your consciousness changed. For sure. You know, your mind changes. So it's impossible. I mean, that kind of writing was more like done without any uh, analysis or um, um, any uh, um, overall awareness. It just, you know, came out on probably most of it unedited. You know, very little editing, and it just comes out the way it is. But then you're very young and, and naive and fresh. Idealistic. Um, no, I wasn't idealistic, but I was I was young and, and fresh and naive probably. When did you actually start writing? Um, well, I can remember first writing things, you know, like in notebooks when I was when I was at school. I, mean, I can't remember the exact age. It might have been fourteen or something. It might have been about fourteen. But they weren't songs, more like poems at first. That's my first memory. Do you regard yourself more as a poet or a musician? No, I regard myself as, as, a, as a, a, mus a singer, musician, and a, and a songwriter. You know, I don't, I don't like to fall into the trap of, I think poet is, is, is uh, it's too categorized. Is Bob Dylan I mean, I a think, poet? Oh, Bob Dylan's a poet, but what I'm saying is, you see, there's, like everything, there's so many games going on, and, and poetry has its games as well. Um, you know, where they, a lot of people like to separate the thing and say, well, you know, there's, um, you know, there's words on their own, you know, and that's poetry, you know, and then, and then you've got songs and that's lyrics. And you have this, these kind of, you know, games going on in poetry and academic circles, circles and uh, sometimes non-academic circles. So, I mean, t you know, to me it's all the same, you know, words are words with or without music. But I don't see, there's no benefit for me to say I'm a poet whatsoever. Me actually, um, I mean there was a lot of. Um, I mean just down the street there was a guy like who used to play country and western music all day, all the time, and leave the door open. So I had this music when I was a kid. Hank Williams and these people, he just like put this on and left the door open so you could hear it down the street. Hind Street. Yeah, and next door there was a, there was a, there was a guy next door and uh, used to have sessions on the weekends outside, out the back. We like had back entries. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd have like um, a lot of singers would gather together and sing just out the back. So this all was going on all around me. Didn't you used to sing with your mom? Yeah, yeah. She was a big influence on you. Well, well I think more the, the 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 music I heard was the influence. I mean, she could have been an influence, but but she was influenced by that music as well. You know, we were both influenced by that music because she heard it as well. Apparently, the ports played a big role in in, this, in music coming in from from America, for instance, like say black music, whatever. 
And there was like, I mean, when I was a kid, there was always, um, there was always American ships coming in. The Belfast when I was a kid, remember that? Well, I'm caught one more time. <laughs> well, I'm on side for you. One more time Way up on Cypress Avenue And I'm coming in the car see. And I'm looking straight at you And then your dad worked in the Hall the Wharf shipyard and he was yeah. a collector, an avid collector, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. But he, he wasn't a collector in the sense of, 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 he was more of, I mean, I think I've got that maybe a bit wrong. He was actually just, he loved the music. More than being a collector, he loved the music, you know. But didn't he have, have, um, have music that no one else had in, say, in Hindford Street? Oh, oh yeah, but it was, um, yeah, he did. Nobody else in Hindford Street had it, no. Was he a big influence on you? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Your father's collection, is it still in one piece? No, I don't think so. No, various bits and pieces uh, got lost or whatever. Who was the well, first? I've got some of it. You do? Yeah. Who was the first uh, singer he introduced you to? Um, or, or, or the first singer, I mean, um... or Who do you remember him I listening the to? The first. Well, I, I remember, uh, um, well, there was, I remember if, uh, Bing Crosby or something, he was the first singer, I think, I remember. Um, and then Mahalia Jackson. Um, gospel, gospel music, I remember, was the first stuff I heard, I think, at that time. Three or five. I remember, and, and a lot of, like, country and western as well, remember that too, hearing country music, yeah. Was that unusual uh, in that time for your father to no, be listening actually, to music? Actually, it wasn't really that unusual. What was unusual was, was the blues part of it. Can you ever see yourself ever giving up? Well, I can't see giving up singing because, I mean, I was, I, mean, I was doing it when I didn't even know uh, that it was going to become uh, a, you know, a career, a job or anything. I mean, I was singing from when I was three. People tell me so. It's, it's, a, it's a natural thing I was born with to do. How sure were you, and when did you become so convinced that you were going to be a musician? Um, just before I left school. What age was that? Um, I was about fifth, just over 15 when I left school. Okay, it's one thing to say to yourself, okay, I'm going to be a musician, and quite another thing to say it, and then go out and do it. Did you actually tell people that you were going to be, and how did they react then? Well, a lot of them, you know, thought it was a joke, you know, especially in school. I mean, in school, uh, because, you know, nobody in my class that I was in was going to become a musician. They were going to come, they thought they would become other things, but, you know, they just didn't treat it the same way. They couldn't relate to it on that level. But then again, how can a 15-year-old relate on that level? Did you just, just know? Because they hadn't heard the, the music I'd heard anyway, you know. How different is Belfast of today to the Belfast of your childhood? Oh, very different, um, very different. I mean, when, when I was growing up there, I mean, well, for a start, people were, people were living together. Um, you didn't have this um, you know, separatist thing. We were living together. So it's completely different, huh? Much more freedom? Yeah. yeah. Is it all changed? Well, from then, yeah. It's completely changed from then, yeah. Take me back. Take me way, way, way back. On Hindford Street where you could feel the silence at half past 11 on long summer nights. As the wireless played Radio Luxembourg and the voices whispered across Beachy River. In the quietness as we sank into restful slumber in the silence. And carried on dreaming in God. Walks up Cherry Valley from North Road Bridge, railway line on sunny summer afternoons, picking apples from the side of the tracks that spilled over from the gardens of the houses on Cypress Avenue, watching the moth catcher work the floodlights in the evenings and meeting down by the pylons. 
playing around Mrs. Kelly's lamp, going out to Hollywood on the bus and walking from the end of the lines to the seaside, stopping at Fusco's for ice cream in the days before rock and roll. Could you ever go back and live there? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. But do you miss Belfast? Well, at times I do, but I miss the Belfast I know. And I miss more, I miss the, you know, I miss the people that I used to know. Um, certain. Uh, yeah, I think I miss a certain way of being uh, the people I used to know. And some of these people you discussed, have you kept in contact with them? Yeah, but it's difficult not being there all the time. I mean, I've, on and off, on and off, you know, they come up because, you know, a lot of them have moved as well and, you know, moved around North of Ireland or South of Ireland or England or America, you know, a lot of people move around as well. Well, so did the curse so of fame destroy those childhood friendships, maybe? Well, it was, it was beyond childhood. I mean, it was well up until, you know, um, my, like, teenage years and, you know, early 20s as well, that Belfast was like this, where, you know, where people were living together, like I said, you know. But now that's completely changed, you know. So, uh, Belfast I knew was a completely different place. Is that where you get your inspiration from, observing and watching? Yeah, but it's a lot harder to do now. Why? Um, I don't have the flexibility of movement. In what context? Well, because my privacy is cut down a lot, so I mean, I can't go in a place and observe people. You know, is well, that, like I used to. Is that where your 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 work is a blessing and a curse? Hmm. Yeah, I say so. Yeah. If you could swap at all, would you go back to those times sometimes? Well, you can't. You can't go back. You have to keep moving. You can't, Hypothetical, no though. No, it's not. It's. I mean, re the reality of it is that you can't go back because you you grow and you change and you get older. You can never go back. And well, I'm eternal. I'm so far away. The younger sons we love and I'm proud of my day. They got to make me righteous. They got to make me whole. band now you have like Brian Kennedy you had Cassandra Wilson coming on recently you're allowing a lot of other people sing your songs on mm -hmm, stage mm -hmm. how did you find working with other people well I find it good I think see this keeps it moving you see this is what part this is part of what keeps it moving because that's I mean that's when I started that's what it was all about it was all about um, you know you could people had to double you know there's no such thing as you didn't have like a guitar player or a sax player or a singer people had to do several things I had to like play a couple of instruments. I mean, I was playing about four instruments myself. I was playing uh, saxophone, guitar, um, sometimes bass and drums. Was this in the group them? The no, no, no. This, this is way before them. Give it's me way an example. This is this. Well, we were called the Monarchs at one point, but we had several names. You know, we changed the names. Like we changed socks. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, the name wasn't a thing then. It was more, you know, if they, you know. So we stuck with the Monarchs, that was the main name. That was the main name we stuck with. What was it like hearing other artists, young artists singing, including your daughter, Shauna, sing your songs? Oh, it was great. I mean, it was great. I mean, I've heard people sing my songs before. Other people have done my songs before. It's good. But in particular, this um, one, which you co-produced. Particularly this one. Well, it was great hearing my daughter singing. Oh, in the darkest night.
beautiful vision I can't make it bright playing in bands originally, like before uh, I ever made a record or became famous, I was playing in bands where they had more singers than just me. Sometimes we had three singers. And I really liked, I really liked working with singers. And this just like dawned on me about a year ago. But I'd forgotten all that stuff. And then suddenly it just, just came back to me. And this is where and I know. So now that's why I'm getting more singers in because I always like to work with singers. I just wanted to, you know, get something, get off the treadmill for a minute rather than, you know, you know my record, my gigs, you know another record, more gigs, which is what I've been doing for 30 years. So it's just a way for me to get off the treadmill and, and see other possibilities. So, you know, that's just another possibility for me producing people or whatever. Have you any particular singers you'd like to work with that you've never worked with? Um, yeah, I'd like to work with, with Ray Charles at some point. Do you still enjoy performing? Most of the time, most of the time. But it enjoys the wrong word, I just... Uh, um, I don't know what it. I mean, I, I just feel it's something natural for me to do. You told me once yeah. you were compelled to do it. Yeah, yeah. Compelled by this energy. Yeah. Is the energy you have to work at as between well. the audience and the band, or between? No, the en the energy starts with with us, with the band, um, and then you know can either be picked up by the audience or not. You know, after that. Well, they're both on the water. Like no one made the art. Little man world. Woman down the 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 I like the interaction between the musicians and the singers, that's what I like, interaction, communication. No, I can't define it. I don't think anyone can. Can you even elaborate more on what this energy is? Well, it's the energy that makes me get up and do it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, but ideally, I'd like to be able to be in control of my own life where I didn't have to do it, you know. Are you in control but, uh, of your own life? Um, not when I have to do that. No, I'm not. No. That, that dictates. The energy dictates. But why do you do something that, that actually, in essence, you're saying you don't really uh, like well, because doing? Because I can't not do it. If you're compelled to do something, there's no way that you can't do it. What compelled you, you know, the energy? If you're a singer, then you must sing. There's nothing else you can do about that, you know. If you stop singing, you try and suppress it, and then um, you're going to get sick, you know? Is this you art? It. It, has to get, it has to come out. Is this art? I suppose so. I mean, if somebody has to paint pictures, then that's what they have to do. I mean, I don't, I don't call it art as such. It's, it's, uh, it's expression. But it's your expression? I mean, art is a sort of high-toned word. I don't know. It's, ex it's expressing oneself. And singing is this form of a communication as well. You know, it's, it's got different levels to it. It's communication, after all. And you say you're in the mu you're in music, but you're not in the music business. Well, I'm in the music business because I make music. Um, that's really what I mean. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that are just in the music business, meaning that, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're making, making music just for, just for profit reasons. They're not really into what they're doing, and they're, they're, they're producing and making records that are based on just so cold, hard business facts of making money and, uh, you know, well, that's the music business. Does that annoy that you? comes under, not anymore, not anymore. No. Must be frustrating, no. though, is it? 
No, not not for me. I'm 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 doing what I want to do. So it's not. It's more frustrating for younger people that are coming in. I think. Yeah. Is music still growing? Or are we just swirling around in ever decreasing circles? Um. Well, if you're talking about um. What we call rock music's not growing now. That's it's all become. Uh, it's become. Uh, a copy of a copy of a copy. Rock music as we know it today. There's no growth in that. You have to go way back to get growth. Um, other forms of music, classical music, is growing in, in different areas, I think. Jazz is growing in different ways, in different forms. Um, yeah, those certain world, world music is, is, is more the growth area now. It's called world music, that's more the growth area world music and, and jazz, for certain forms of jazz. Whenever the sunshine comes through Whenever my thoughts turn to you Whatever you want me to do Baby, I will be there Well, I crawled up the hill Dropping through the mill Just as long as I feel the bill Time. And you drink it, champagne and wine. Anytime I don't mind, even if I've got the blues. Yes, and I pray it on my dues. You decide to go for a cruise. Baby, I will be there. What I do, I consider it to be the same as jazz. You know, it, it has to change. Where some some forms of music, you know, uh, don't have to change. You know, they can be like the same all the time. For instance, I mean, a lot of pop music, um, you know, uh, can can be played the same time and time again. But that's the nature of that music. You know, what I'm doing is more spontaneous, and it, it must change. Who do you listen to now? Um, I mean, I mainly listen to the people I started with, oddly enough, and um, because I mean, it's. Uh, it's harder to find anything that's that's equal or better, for some reason. I mean, um, I mean, even the people that are like you know, uh, sort of doing it now, they 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 they're going back to people in the eighties and seventies and sixties and that. There hasn't been better quality music uh, in a long, long time. So for me, I mean, the highest quality were were people like Ray Charles and uh, Johnny Hooker, yeah, Hooker and uh, Lightning Hopkins and. These people, what was it? Was just that's what it was. It was there was no th synthesizers, you know. It was that's what it was, and but that's harder and harder to get on as we go along. So so and actually, you know, we all have to go back to redefine it because it's not happening with the newer stuff. Tell me a story. Wrapped in glory For one Irish rover Tell me you're wiser now Tell me you're older Wrapped By the light in your eyes, you're so far away. It's like a ship out on the sea without a sail. Maybe you've gone astray. Um, are you, were you idealistic in, in, in your youth, and did you become cynical of the passage of time, or were you always quite cynical? No, I became cynical over a period of time. Did the music business make you cynical? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm not sure whether it was the music business or... Being, I don't know. It's, I suppose it was just being around a lot of negativity. And, you know, a lot of negative people in it 
over the years. In the music business? Yeah, yeah, a lot of negativity. And then having to uh, fight that and transcend it and protect yourself against it is where the cynicism comes in. How did you do that? Well, just by sometimes ignoring it, you know, sometimes being cynical about it, you know, various ways. What was your first musical job? Um, my first musical job, well, oh, I st first started performing in school, but that wasn't, that wasn't a job. Um, first musical job was, I think, uh, Muckamore Hospital. Uh, Muckamore Hospital with a group. Um, when I was still at school, I remember that. That was my first job. Can you remember that quite clearly? I don't remember the exact, I can remember bits and just remember going up there. How much did you get paid? I can't remember how long. Can you remember how much you got paid? Well, we didn't get paid. That one was for, for, the, for the hospital. It was a charity thing for the hospital, so we didn't get paid. First one I got paid, I think, was, was for the hut in Chamberlain Street. Or the Brickborough Hall, one of those. Might have been the Brickborough Hall. Is the hut still there? I, I don't think so. Do you think that good grinding that you got at a very early age for you to really work? I mean, you told me once you did, was it so many sets a week in Germany? How many was it? 53 a week. So no days off. That gave you a very good grinding and as in a professional way to survive the business so well, long? It gave me all of it because it wasn't about the business, it was about playing, see? And um, a, lot of, see, a lot of people didn't get that background. Um, so they came in on a different, different aspect. Like, so, say, younger bands, are, and they're not younger now, but they came in on making videos. A lot of people came in on making videos and then that became, you know, the product. And then the music was like secondary, this kind of thing. So I, I, I was lucky to come into it when it was, it was all about music, mainly. And it, you know, it wasn't so much about, uh, well, it wasn't as big for one thing. I mean, even the record business wasn't as big, it was very, very small. Record business was very, very small. And the people that were running it hadn't a clue, you know. And I think it's become uh, more corrupt with people that do have a clue than when, when they didn't have a clue, oddly enough. Which was better? Oh, I thought it was better when they didn't have a clue. Really? Yeah. The brown-eyed girl. Tell me about the um, the fact that it was sort of was reinvented for you when it went into that movie, Sleeping with the Enemy. Well, it wasn't reinvented for me. It was it was reinvented by um, I, th I think the people that um, you know wanted to put it in the films. It was well, yeah, reinvented for the audience then. Yeah, but the th well, the thing about it was that it wasn't it wasn't put out like it was uh, an old record. It was put out like a new record, um, which with no no sort of publicity to the fact that it was recorded a long time ago. How long ago? In fact, when I was what, 21 or something, I recorded that. A long time ago, so. And then w when it, it was came put out, like it was a new record. So you know, I think people were asking for it because they thought it was a new record. You know. Um, I think that was a bit deceptive, but that was because Sony Records bought it and put it out like a, without any explaining what it was. You know, put it out like it was a new release. Okay, but does know? it make you angry that someone else has your records? Well, no, not no. I, no, it's just it, it went on all the time. Uh, you know, it, it made me angry years ago when I was when I was starving and broke. You know, but I mean now it's just, it's just cold business. It's just basically cold business. But when I was starving and broke, it made me really angry. Because, I mean, I was uh, supposed to be living the life of, 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 a, of a, a star or something, and I, and I was broke, so, you know. It's again really the, the illusion of fame, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if you could do it all over again, would you? Well, I think I'd do it differently. How differently? I mean, I could say that, you know, I'd love to have good business advice when I started out, which I didn't, but then again, that wasn't available, so I don't know. Would you, it's okay. Can you see yourself like B.B. King at 70 doing 253 gigs a year? No. No. Because uh, I don't really, I don't like touring. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to be touring um, that much. Not really. And, you know, so like people that, you know, there are people that do that, but then again, they don't do all the other things. See, I also write, so I need time to write and you know, work my songs out and that. And that's, see, you know, I don't just perform. A lot of people, they just perform, so all they do is gigs. But I need to, have, I've got the other hats as well. I've got several hats to wear. So I need to have time to wear the other hats. So for me, I have to split it up more.
left is just to, to keep to keep on writing songs and keep keep coming up with uh, uh, something to say whatever that might be at any given time or what other people have to say because you can also write about what other people are saying it doesn't have to be you all the time so observing like to keep observing and keep keep writing songs <laughs> I think the whole thing about being creative is that you're always moving. You know, you're, you're always in... Uh, um, you always have to be in forward motion, otherwise you're not creating. That's the whole point of it, actually. And so um, um, I think there's, there's a tendency to stick people in certain roles that, that, that they've done. And this is, this is an ongoing problem, I think, with everybody. That whether they perform or write or whatever, it's just, you know or act in films, it's an ongoing thing. to make music in some form. I mean, whether that's perform or just write songs, I don't know, I'm not sure. But I'm compelled to play. And, uh, you know, sometimes writing and recording is not enough playing. Because if you see, if you're a musician, then you have to play. That's one of the things that people tend to forget. Um, musicians must play, singers must sing. You know, otherwise you lose your chops. You know? If you play a horn, you have to play a horn, for instance, you lose your chops very quickly. So, I mean, this is something that you have to keep doing. So you have to keep a band going all the time? You have to. You have to keep playing, you know, or you lose it. The reality is it's just a joke. That's the reality. 
Jerry Seinfeld joked that he's the third tenor that no one knows, but Jose Carreras is no third player to Domingo or Pavarotti. A genius in his own right, debuting at the age of 11, he's overcome amazing odds and won his place as one of the best in the world. Learn more about his amazing life story when Bravo profiles Jose Carreras next Saturday at 105 a.m. Eastern on Bravo.